video is on covalent bonds. So covalent bonds is a bond between a nonmetal and a nonmetal, and these are going to make molecules. In a covalent bond, electrons are shared between two nonmetals. When we write covalent bonds and covalent molecules, we need to incorporate prefixes. Why do we need to incorporate prefixes? Well, because we can't tell how many of each uh, element or each atom we have in our molecule like we can with ionic compounds. Remember with ionic compounds, our metal and nonmetal each have their respective charges because our metal, the cation that it forms, is going to be, form that cation because it will have taken its electrons and they will have been donated to the anion. Here that doesn't happen. They're simply shared and we can't tell, just looking at valence electrons, how many are shared. So to tell how many we do have, we use prefixes. And these are the prefixes here. You need to know prefixes for 1 through 10. One prefix, the prefix for 1, mono. This one is special. We never put mono on our first element. We only use mono with our second element. So when we name covalent compounds, our first element is going to have the prefix and then the element name just like we did with ionic bonds, having our element name. But our prefix here cannot be mono. Our second element will have the prefix, the element stem, and then with that IDE ending. So let's go through two examples. First example I have is N2O5. N2, this 2 tells me I have two nitrogens, so I have dinitrogen. And then 5 oxygens, so that means I have penta, and then ox -ide. Now one thing to know is we don't write penta oxide with these two vowels here. We don't put an A before an O, so we're going to get rid of that A and we're just going to have pentoxide. Other ones we will keep that A in there. Our next example we have is nitrogen trichloride. Nitrogen, we write N. We don't have a prefix in front of nitrogen, so that tells us we just have one nitrogen. Trichloride tells us we have chlorine, and the tri in front tells us we have three. So we get NCl3. There's a couple special covalent molecules that we need to learn about, and they are diatomics. Diatomic, di for two, atomic for atom, so literal translation of two atoms. These are special elements that exist bonded together, and they're never alone. Okay? Other elements like calcium, sodium, they can exist by themselves, just as Ca or Na. But here, these elements need to be bonded together to keep them in their most stable form. So I remember Brinkelhoff, I have bromine, Br2, it's bromine, iodine is I2, nitrogen, N2, chlorine, Cl2, hydrogen, H2, oxygen, O2, and fluorine, F2. You wrote it out, you get Brinkelhoff. You can also know that you have the Magnificent Seven, starting with nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, down to bromine, chlorine, and iodine on your periodic table. It does make a 7 with hydrogen at the top. So an example of how this is used in real life, if we were to make water, we would add hydrogen and oxygen together. When we write this out, hydrogen, when it's written just by itself, is really H2, not H. Oxygen, written by itself, is O2. So we'd write H2 plus O2, not H plus O. So when you are writing out chemical reactions or writing out names, or I'm um, sorry, compounds for different names, if you run into these diatomics, you'll write the element with the two after it because it's bonded together. So example, hydrogen would be hydrogen bonded to another hydrogen.